Hello friends, I'm Hannah. This is Sweet Fern Homestead where we talk about sacred home, sacred roots, and sacred ritual. And many of you know that uh, the way I make some money is I have a secondhand thrift shop online called Pocket and Fern. And I think I've had Pocket and Fern since 2018. It might be 2017, but I feel like it's 2018. And I started selling clothes on Instagram. I would do Instagram sales. And then this last year and a half, I took a break from the shop. I finished up my 14 year career in holistic health coaching and I reopened the shop. And instead of using Instagram, I, you know, I'm moving away as much as I can from social media platforms. I know YouTube is considered a social media platform, but I feel like I have control over it in a way I don't feel like, like if I make an Instagram story, it kind of disappears unless I decide to put it in my highlights. These videos can live forever and I really appreciate that. I also have been very sensitive to the fact that so many people I know, especially in the homesteading world, you know, or the sustainability, sustainable living kind of genre, um, on Instagram, their accounts are being closed down. And I, I notice that when people start talking about things like supply chain issues, stocking up, uh, preparing, the, you know, P-R-E-P-P-I-N-G-ing, uh, that tends to be when you're seeing accounts closed down. But sometimes it's super random. You use the wrong hashtag, you could get your account closed down. So I'm just being very careful of that. Plus, I wanted it to be mine. I wanted the shop to feel like cozy and warm and rich in a place where you could come to my website and also just poke around a little bit if you want. I'm going to start blogging again. Do you hear me? I'm going to start blogging again. So since I'm not running my circles anymore, my programs, my online programs, I'm not really writing and I miss it and I need it. I'm a writer, I need to write. So I, w I am gonna start blogging again. I have thought about using that other platform a lot of people are using. What's that called? There's no way I'm gonna remember it on this video. I'll have to like, but you may know what I'm talking about. Um, where you can get a subscription, you can put out free content, you can do some paid content. And I also have Patreon where I do my own content where you get a sort of podcast. I'm doing this a lot today, I have no idea why. Where you get a podcast, which is not actually a podcast, it's just me doing a voice memo on my phone, making a link and sending it to you. And um, it becomes a little bit more personal and I just like it. And that's my own content. So anyway, I wanted the website, I wanted my shop to be its own cozy little thing. And it also helps me with orders. I don't have to input addresses. I don't have to figure out the shipping. I can have those all put in there ahead of time. So when someone comes to place an order, now everything is one of a kind. So there is like, if there's some like really popular item and somebody gets there and puts it in their cart and then walks away to go to the bathroom or make some food or says, I'll come back and I wanna do more shopping later, that item might not be there anymore because somebody might have already bought it. But there is a charm in one of a kind pieces. And I love that. I also love that unlike Poshmark and eBay and all these different places, there's no negotiating. I don't have to pay a fee to a site to host these items. Well, I do to my website, but you know, I kind of consider that part of everything. Um, but so I can keep the prices at a really reasonable price point, as long as I've bought them for a reasonable price point. Sometimes I buy things and they're more expensive, but I'm not paying that extra fee. And I just, I just wanted it to be mine. Well, today I was going through some things. I'm getting ready for my third Thursday sale of the month. So the third Thursday of every month will be new items, a shop update. And I wanted to kind of highlight a few things that happen when you are thrift shopping 
or maybe in your own closet. And that is when you run across things that have holes, tears, things that need mending, new buttons, uh, snags, the instinct is to get rid of that. And if we're trying to be a more sustainable like, steward of this planet, then we need to do less of that. So when I go to the thrift store, if I find something and it has a little something wrong with it, either for myself or someone else, I will strongly consider mending it when it is a really high quality piece. And I'm gonna show you some of those now that, that have either been mended or that we are about to mend. And I say we because I ask my daughter to help me all the time because I really don't like sewing. I can sew, I just don't really like it. But you do need a needle and thread basically to fix most of these things. You don't need a sewing machine, you just need a needle and thread. Now sometimes all you need is a needle. So this is a sweater I picked up. It was incredibly inexpensive. I think it was like $1.50. It's Sonoma brand, so you know, nothing, nothing too special. But I'm pretty sure it was donated because there was one piece in this sweater down here that was snagged. Now, if you look at it now, because I've already fixed it, you can't see where that was. And all I do when I get those snags in scarves or sweaters is I just take it from the outside and I get a little needle and I find the snag, the, the pull, and I get the needle and I get that piece of fabric and I just pull it very gently. And usually it fixes it pretty much forever until you get another snag somewhere else. So that basically makes this sweater that was $1.50 like a pretty much brand new sweater. It doesn't even seem like it's been worn that much. The color was absolutely gorgeous. This was not a sweater I was gonna pass up. It's like a little bit cropped. I mean, it's perfect. So that is like the first trick always. And when I find vintage things, especially vintage scarves, I'm often mending them in that way. I'm grabbing some of those pulled threads back through and it just tightens it up and makes it perfect again. I'm still adjusting to my hair. I feel like I have a wig on most days. All right, so this is a vintage skirt. I told you I have a problem with collecting purple vintage skirts. I don't know why. Purple's not even like really my color color, but when it comes to skirts, I have this weird weakness. Maybe you find vintage skirts in purple a lot. I never really thought of that, but so this is my own personal skirt. It has this little hole in the bottom. It looks like it probably just got like something got, um, like it got snagged and then just made a little hole. This is a very easy fix. You just put the fabric right back together and then on the inside, you just do a couple of stitches and then you will have your skirt back again. I don't even know if I'm gonna fix this because it's just my skirt and I'm, not totally invested in needing it to be perfect, uh, but at some point I probably will. So you can just see the fabric on this. It's just gorgeous. So this next one I got for the shop. This is a beautiful wool sweater with this embroidery detail. It's stunning. The brand is Land House, and I haven't actually looked it up to see what these are um, selling for. However, when I bought it, I just thought that it was an open cardigan. But when I got it and washed it, I realized that there were buttonholes and there's no buttons. So this is a, again, a very simple fix where along my travels, when I find some vintage buttons, I will just come in and add buttons, probably in this brown color here. Um, or possibly this gray and then but probably the brown color and then I will have a fully working gorgeous sweater to put in my shop isn't that beautiful now sometimes I buy something knowing that there is a problem with it and I have sold things before and I've stated there is a problem with it and some people will buy it who feel like I love this item it's worth me putting some time into it to fix it so this one I bought from another secondhand seller knowing 
that there was a, and then this is new, I don't know what that is, it seems to have come on after I washed it, so I've got to check out what that is. I don't know if it's like some laundry detergent or something, but this, the seller was very honest about the fact that it was slightly torn back here, and that is obviously the easiest fix. A couple of stitches to tighten that back up, and the reason that I invested in it is one, the cost was lower because all it needed was a couple of stitches, but you can't sell something, you know, at full cost. But I just thought that this was one of the most beautiful dresses I have ever seen. And the fabric is just so soft. This is like, for me, this color is everything. It's like an olive green and it's a size medium. So I was pretty sure it wasn't gonna fit me, but I decided to get it anyway because I knew I could put this in my shop in the spring. I can zip it up, but it's too tight and I just think about it being on me. And I think that it really is meant to be loose, to really hang on somebody. So for sure this is a medium and um, it will be oversized, more baggy fit on someone who's a medium. But I mean, just look at this detail. Can you see why I fell in love with this and decided to just go for it? So that's why I got that one. Moving on to cashmere. This is a cashmere dress. I didn't notice a single thing wrong with it when I bought it, but when I went to photograph the dress, I found a very small hole right there. And again, just putting the fabric together, gathering it nice and softly together, and then a few stitches on the inside, I should be good to go with this. But you can see there is this like really pretty detail in the dress here. Gorgeous piece. These are worth, I mean, these Kinross dresses sell for like two, three hundred dollars. So this is a real find, definitely worth mending that tiny little hole. Now here's a skirt that Chloe already mended for me. This is a handmade quilted skirt. This is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Every square just has something so interesting in it. Again, I didn't notice that when I bought it, it had one of these little, I don't remember which one it was, but one of these little edges had a small hole in it. And Chloe just very quickly mended that up for me. It's not beautiful. So that will be going in my shop now that it's all mended. I am just completely taken with this skirt, this vintage patchwork gorgeousness. Now here's a purple skirt. This is just like a cotton, very flowy purple skirt that I bought years and years ago for the shop but the bottom was just completely torn up. It wasn't this bad. This is like after years of wear, but it had some holes in the bottom. So I decided to keep it because purple skirt, you know? And one of the things I love about this skirt is that I can wear it outside with my muck boots. I can go in the chicken coop. I can go in the garden. I can do anything I want outside and it is supremely comfortable. So like I can wear this just with a tank top in the summer or I can layer on in the winter, leggings, boots, a sweater, jacket. And I know that the bottom can just get torn up. Like it just doesn't matter to me. This is not something that is precious, but I love it. I love the way it feels. It's, it's like really big on me, but I kind of love that, that I just have all this like big material just kind of flowing around me. So this is one of those pieces where it was super inexpensive. It didn't end up being something that I could repair and put in the shop, but it did end up being a piece that I could use for the parts of my life that are much more messy and dirty than my shop life is. The last piece is a sweater that I've had for a long time. And, I, and over time, this tiny little hole in the, in the armpit, kind of like, it's like right here, this tiny little hole became a really big hole and I put it on the other day. Chloe said, would you like me to fix that for you? So she has kindly offered to fix my sweater for me, which is really nice. So again, this is just a beautiful black sweater. I think it's the brand, I think it's the brand Leith or Leith, L-E-I-T-H, which make, they make gorgeous sweaters. Two of my favorite sweaters are from that brand and this is one of them. And this is just like a sweater that I can put on in the house, just cozy up on. I can put pajamas on and put this sweater on over it, 
or I could certainly dress up this sweater and go out and about. So it's just a couple of examples to show you either how I mend clothes and make sure that clothes get another chance, another round at life, and don't get put into a landfill simply because there is a small hole, buttons missing. It just doesn't make sense. These clothes, some of these clothes are so absolutely exquisitely made, like that patchwork skirt. And somebody took so much time to create it, to make it. And so if we can give it another round of life and add it to a wardrobe that we are building with sustainable practices, reusing, repairing, things that we've thrifted, things that we've been maybe given for free, how can we give them a new life? So I just thought it would be fun to make this video today just to kind of show you what it is I work with behind the scenes with the shop or in my own closet. One of my dear subscribers has asked me to do a closet tour because she knows that I have ADHD and if I can't see things, then they don't exist to me. And for the last couple of years, I have been working on a new system. I've just like refined it and refined it and refined it. And as I go through and clear more clutter, the system just becomes stronger and stronger. I feel like I've almost nailed it, like I'm really close. So I will be sharing that with you to show you how for me, everything I own at the moment, minus socks, underwear, and tank tops, some tank tops, everything is within my sight lines in my closet. So I do wanna share that with you. So that's coming. And I hope this encourages you just to give a second look to something you might think you might pass by when you're at the thrift store or something in your closet that you don't wear because it's missing a button or has a hole in it. Just think about just taking a few minutes to see what you might be able to do to just give that item a quick mend, some new life, breathe some new life into it or be able to pay it forward, gift it to somebody who you know might admire it and be able to use it going forward. Don't be afraid to wear something just because it doesn't meet our standard of fashion rules, which is like, it has to be in perfect working order. It actually doesn't. It does not need to be in perfect working order. This is my absolute favorite skirt and it's full of holes and I adore it. So let me know in the comments below, do you have a favorite piece? Is there anything that might be considered wrong with it? Is there something that you've stopped wearing? Because maybe there's a hole, a rip, a stain. I didn't talk about stains, but that's another area too that um, that's certainly worth looking at. Like how can we get that stain out or can we re the fabric, create a brand new piece of clothing? So let me know down below what you do, kind of what your thoughts are. If you're out thrifting, do you pass up something just because there might be a little something wrong with it or do you go ahead and invest in that piece? Now a little tip is when you go up to check out at a thrift store, if there's something with a hole or something wrong with an item, make sure to tell them. So the, a couple of these pieces that I bought, I didn't notice those things ahead of time, but had I noticed them, I am sure that I would have been able to get a discount on that item. So don't be afraid to ask. You might as well. Can't hurt. As always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you.